Chris was bringing grilled chicken and pasta to feed the workers. We had just finished um, passing out all the food, and then I went outside to talk to Chris because I saw the general manager um, talking to, to him. Uh, he approached me, he asked me to leave the premises, and I said, you know, I will leave. I complied, I said, I'll leave. Uh, several minutes later, that's when uh, uh, five or six squad cars pulled up, and about 12 police officers jumped out. Uh, several members of my union, the ALU, came out of the cafeteria to my aid, and the police officers actually started to arrest them before they arrested me. Turns out that Amazon has learned nothing after its union busting debacle in Bessemer, Alabama. In fact, it will likely have to face more legal challenges very soon uh, since there seems to be some collusion taking place between Amazon and the New York Police Department. Uh, more Perfect Union has put out a video detailing uh, how union organizers were swiftly arrested, including Chris Smalls, uh, which I mean, it's just, it really does remind me of what happened in Occupy Wall Street, right? Uh, when Zuccotti Park was cleared out by the NYPD. And the NYPD had just received a massive donation from JP Morgan Chase, uh, tens of millions of dollars. And when we talk about policing in this country, it is interesting to see how fiercely they protect corporations, how fiercely they protect property. Uh, but when it comes to the rights of workers, not so concerned. The idea of arresting someone for providing food to workers is, I mean, it tells you everything you need to know about the priorities here. But this is taking place at JFK 8 in Staten Island. And I want to go to more of this more perfect union video because it just shows you how gross the treatment has been. And this isn't a unique incident, this isn't a unique case. We're seeing this at other Amazon warehouses across the country. Let's watch. I was the third one to be arrested. And obviously for no reason, they charged me with trespassing. As they were leaving said, we won, you lost. So it's apparent to us that the Staten Island police are really the 21st century Pinkerton force for Amazon. I mean, this is the th third time that the police have been harassing the organizers. So this isn't just like the first time this has occurred. And not only is it not the first time it's occurred, uh, we see other union busting tactics, other election interference uh, for union organizers in other states as well. We'll get to those details, but what happened to Chris Smalls? Well, uh, he is an Amazon labor union organizer and he ended up getting arrested uh, as you saw from the video. He was held in a prison cell for more than six hours after simply delivering food to his fellow organizers, that's it. I mean, they had to let him go because uh, that's not a crime. In fact, what Amazon did in, in essentially getting the NYPD to arrest these organizers uh, breaks certain um, NLRB rules, uh, labor laws. And so, uh, of course, the organizers are now planning to pursue legal action as a result of this. And it seems like Amazon does think it's above the law. So for instance, workers say that the arrests were used to scare, intimidate and punish workers from voting yes on unionization. A recent National Labor Relations Board ruling actually forced Amazon to agree to stop this practice of union busting. In March, the National Labor Relations Board sued Amazon against, a comp against the company's flagrant unfair labor practices. In fact, Bessemer, Alabama, which of course made big news, its warehouse was attempting to unionize, was able to, the workers there were able to secure a re-vote for the union. Their initial vote failed. And part of the reason why they're able to get an opportunity to vote again is because there was clear evidence of Amazon interfering with their election process. One of the other ways that they engage in union busting, and by the way, break labor laws while doing it, is they they snatch any type of union literature in the break rooms. And there's evidence of this, it's been documented. Again, this is JFK 8 in Staten Island, let's watch.
<laughs> Good job, dude. You really played yourself two times in like 20 minutes. Good job, Tammy. In another video, uh, Tammy was confronted by one of the workers and uh, he was like, hey, you know you're not allowed to do that. And she's like, oh, no, no, no I'm, not, I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything at all. And then you see the video that we just showed you where she's clearly doing away with the uh, union literature. Um, and there are other examples, uh, for instance, in Bessemer, Alabama, there were instances of uh, the employers forcing the workers to join in these meetings that were just meant to propagandize against the union. And look, if it's your source of income, if it's your job, if your livelihood depends on it, it's it's not far fetched to be intimidated by those kinds of meetings, right? To be scared that if you do vote in favor to unionize, somehow the employers will find out, somehow you'll get fired, you'll lose your job, and then you know you're you're risking a lot. Uh, so it's really, really important that we have you know, officials in the federal government, in the NLRB uh, that do the right thing and actually protect the rights of these workers as they're attempting to unionize. It's one of the positive components of the Biden administration. Obviously, I would like to see more, but compared to what we saw in Trump's administration, you know, Biden's NLRB is more willing to jump in and protect the rights of workers, especially when their labor rights and certain labor laws are being broken by their employers. So look, this is an incredibly important effort in JFK 8. The revote in Bessemer, Alabama is also very important. It's one thing to have a small company that unionizes, that's also great. But when we talk about the largest employers in the country, Having a unionized workforce means more than just having the ability to change your immediate work environment. That's that's very important. However, you have the power and you have like baked in organization to essentially apply pressure on a much higher level, right? Apply pressure when it comes to government policy. I just think you get far more bang for your buck, I guess, far more bang for your organizing if you organize these massive corporations like Amazon, where they're employing so many Americans. And to have this organized effort to change their working conditions and also possibly apply pressure to state and federal government is really, really important. So I love to see it. I love that they're undeterred. And you see this like labor militancy kind of rising up that we hadn't seen in this country for literally decades. I mean, unions are unionized workers are a tiny, tiny percentage of workers in this country. But we're starting to see this very um, strong effort to change that. And I love seeing it, especially at places like Amazon. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.